feeling for lots. Yes. You're feeling for things that are hard, like nutmegs. But if you find something, first thing is you don't panic. I had a kebab knife through that hand yeah. and took my knuckle off. Kebab knife, did you say? Kebab knife's worse than a dog bite and a human bite. Jeez. I don't want to be, you know, abnormal person. This is better if I go with my sickness and die one time. So you've submitted a urine sample? Yeah, yeah, urine sample, yeah. But it was meant to be a poo sample. Poo sample, well, there's poo. So you need to, you need to oh, poo. Oh, that's what I was, that's oh, where all the problems started. Oh. And you talked about feeling suicidal. What is it you thought about doing? Just, like, Tucking myself under a train. Would you like to see a doctor? Yeah, I'll find out and book an appointment. Okay, what's your name? Social status speaking, sorry for the delay, how can I help? Oh, why do I have to do oh. Because it goes out every three months. Well, why doesn't it warn me that well, it probably does actually. No, it doesn't. Well just put it in the game. Okay, well you have got a locum, but you're you're um you're you're on the system. Yeah, you're on the system and, and there's there's one, two, three, four, five patients waiting. Oh bloody hell. Alright then, okay, bye. Okay, Next move these okay. over to Ferdy. Spencer. <sighs> Sorry. That's all right. I'm so glad to see you. Why is that? Bloody marvellous last one. What was I? What happened to you? Uh, beat me up Monday or Sunday. Broke my ribs and one member of my family. I won't say his name hit me because he thought he could do me with a, uh, bad ribs, so he knew I was vulnerable. And uh, the hospital gave me codeine uh, last night. And because I'm on Subitex, I can't take codeine. I'm sorry. I can't breathe properly. Yes. I don't like to lie. That's all right. I, I'm, I appreciate you not lying. Um, you've been to A&E a lot. Recently, haven't you? Yeah, 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 I have. <sighs> Good morning, Sir John's Medical Centre. So I'm speaking, how can I help? I think everyone's waiting like a oh, 45 minutes out there. I'm going to get lynched. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> oh, Let me uh, just move that chair and then you can reverse into this spot. Right, push up with that hand. OK? Yeah. See if you can do that every time you get in and out of bed. Are you all right? Yeah. Low. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Push, 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 push. Go on, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. You're going to kill me, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That cleared your chest, didn't it? <laughs> right. When you do stand up and things, do you, do you get short of breath with that? Well, do you know what? If I was to tell you something, right, you wouldn't believe is I'm no better off now for giving it up than I was when I was smoking. I've got more problems now. I've got high blood pressure. Oh, have you? Yeah, which I never had before. Well, it's My cholesterol always goes through oh. the roof. Every time I give it up, I end up with more ailments <laughs> than they do if I'm smoking. But just think how better you're feeling, like, well, in another year's time. Better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got some more dosh in your pocket. Yeah. I get out and about, cos yeah. in the winter, I don't go out as much as I do no, in the summer. No, no. Mind you, if you had a better wheelchair, you might get well, out a bit more, mightn't you? Yeah, well, sometimes if I had a better carer. <laughs> <laughs> He's nearly tipped me out the wheelchair on the way here. Him. Yeah. And stand there laughing, pushing the trolley. Now you're a young man. Mine is very paid. Get Stop. out of it, you're a bloke. You know, they... 
Oh dear. Mm. Shedney, it's. Yeah, you can go to the pharmacy and buy some stuff there to get rid of them. We, we wouldn't really need to see a doctor for that. I've been getting breast pains since the car accident now. Yes. It's become more predominant with pain, more sensitivity, and it's more my right breast more than my left. Right. I think we probably ought to examine your breast today. Yes, please. Don't you think? You'd have been here quickly if you'd had any lumps, wouldn't you? I would have been, or I would have gone to A&E if you wasn't here, so I would have definitely acted upon it straight away. You would have gone to A&E? If you wasn't here, yeah. Don't go to A&E. All right, fair enough. How long have those doctors been qualified in A&E? I don't know, not long, probably. Exactly. <laughs> How long have I been qualified? Ages. 25 years as I've known you. Yeah. And I don't know what I've heard on top well, of that you've had. What I'm saying to you is, if you did feel a lump, you know, phone the surgery mm -hmm. and you book an appointment, you say, I want an appointment as soon as possible, and then we'll, they'll fit you in. OK. As long as you're seen within 48 hours, if you've got a lump, mm -hmm. that's fine. OK. I just need to look in your eye. Ah! Please don't let me. Look straight ahead at me. Good. Lucky boy. <laughs> the eye's going to be all right. All right, look. That's not my knockout punch. Ah! It's my left hand. Yeah, well, you're, you're holding that a bit yeah, carefully. Uh, Is that giving ah! you a lot of pain? My knuckle's back. Oh, I had a kebab knife through that hand. Yeah. Took my knuckle off. Kebab knife, did you say? Yeah. Went through there. Oh, through yeah, there. I can see it. An enemy, believe it or not, jumped over in a kebab shop, pulled a kebab knife out. I jumped over the kebab counter and tried to grab it off it. I didn't know that was double bladed. Yeah, that's sharp. <sighs> kebab knife's worse than a dog bite and a human bite. I've got so many scars, holes out. Yeah. See ya. More. Yeah. More. More. Uh, but I'm a nice guy. Right. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. You can take things like ibuprofen, can't you? I've got ibuprofen. They're bloody shit. Yeah, yeah this is stronger than ibuprofen, but it works in the same way. It should help yeah. to manage your pain a lot better. OK. When I saw your face, I was bloody happy. Good. Well, I'm glad, Spencer. All right, then, Spencer. Take care. Well, All the best. Well, thank you very much. No problem. Bye bye. You're looking at the nipples. Which way are they pointing? Make sure they both go in the same direction. Okay. You're not what one pointing upwards and one going downwards. Mm -hmm. then you haven't got any nipples that are going inwards. No. And you haven't got any what we call dimpling on the skin. So that's a sort of bubble or dimple. Brilliant. Okay, you've done very well. Now let's have you lying down. So once you've done that, then you proceed to the feel bit. If I'm examining a lady's breasts. I'm hoping I'm not going to find anything. But clearly, I've always got to um, be on the lookout for something sinister. But basically, your right hand will feel your left side and your left hand will feel the right. other one. If you've got to break bad news to somebody, the secret is to always give them a little bit of hope and to break it in little pieces. And you're feeling, you're feeling for lumps. Yes. You're feeling for things that are hard, like nutmegs. But if you find something, first thing is you don't panic. Patients who are waiting to see Dr. Corrali, would you like to come forward, please? OK, so you have an appointment booked for today at 2.45 and you want to cancel it. OK, I'll cancel that. Thank you very much for letting us know. Thanks, bye. 2.45 cancellation, Dr. Va um, Savage. You right, fair day? In everybody's breast, we always find that there's a little bit of breast that creeps up underneath the armpit. It's called the tail of the breast. Just a little bit of sensitivity under there. Yeah. You're doing so well. It's very, 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 very good. Very good. The mm -hmm. last little bit's around the top here. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, look, good news, there's no lumps. Good. Have a tissue. <laughs> That was I difficult, really wasn't it? <laughs> oh, right. look, you okay. you, you're, you're being a really brave soldier because mm. 
having had that accident's mm -hmm. made you shaking you up it's made you feel really vulnerable hasn't it it has indeed i think that knowing your patients is really very important as a gp because with the time constraints you've got to decide very quickly on in your consultation whether what that person is coming in complaining about is something very serious or it is something not so serious. Sometimes you don't get it right, but you've got to make decisions. OK, so what do you think? There's all sorts of explanations for this. OK. Could be a hormonal blip, mm -hmm. which has been made worse by the shock of the accident. Mm -hmm. If you know your patients and they come in and they look desperately thin, or they look pale, or they look worried, you know that they didn't look like that the last time they came, and so there must be something wrong. It could be part of the general shake-up. That mm -hmm. could be what's making it worse, okay? okay? But at the moment, mm -hmm. I don't see any reason to refer you to the breast clinic. Okay. Yeah, I've looked at you now, mm -hmm. give you some anti-inflammatories, mm -hmm. and we'll make a point of re revisiting this in a month's time. Okay, that's fine. You're happy with that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely happy. Good. Good. Thank you. Change your room. You're moving around, woman. <laughs> when did we have one done? Yeah. Okay, not to worry. So you get yourself ready for me, okay? And how you been, James? How's your weekend? Oh, quiet. Watch all my sport, the cricket, the football. Yeah, I love me cricket. I want spring to come because I've got that discount rail card I paid 30 quid for. Yeah. <coughs> and I get day, a day down the coast. Half price, see? Get, get a good weather, I can go to Broccoli, change at East Croydon, go down to Worthing. I like Worthing. You like Worthing? Yeah, nice. Well, I, I, I like um, Margate, but... Margate? Yeah, our, fr my, our friends live, live in Margate. Yeah, that used to be the bee's knees, you know? I know. Margate, Ramsgate. Right, relax this down. Yeah. Oh, you are gentle, darling. <laughs> right, there you go. All done. Now, don't forget me blood pressure, darling. You want your blood pressure done as well? Yes, cos I think you've put it up. <laughs> Hello. Hello, how Hi. can I help? Can I just collect onto a prescription for me, Stephen Harmon? Harmon, yeah. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Rest of the family OK? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Good. When did you put your request in? Come in. Amanda? How are you? What is it that I can do to help you today? Right, well, I didn't realise I was low on the tab my tablets as I thought I was. Right, OK. So this is, main this is mainly a, a, a visit to grab some tablets. I'm, 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 I'm very confused by your medication list, so I was just thinking maybe we should just quickly fire through it and try and figure out what you are taking and what you're not taking. Well, I take all of it. No, 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 I know, but I think there's certain things on here which just... It, 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 I just want to check. Got, um, make sure we're, we're giving you the right things, right? The amitriptyline apparently should be helping what I've got up going on the top of my neck, and I'm under the physio at Lewisham as well. Good. How long have you been on the amlodipine for? Quite a while now, because they've actually put me on another little one. Is that the bisoprolol? Yeah. And have they put the um, morphine on repeat as well? Well... Because I've been on it long enough now for it to be on repeat. Well... The question is, do you want to be on morphine? Well, no, I don't, but it does help with the pain. Funnily enough, as a doctor and a GP, I don't want to give out medications to people. Um, I only really want to use them when I absolutely have to. My body's getting used to the 20 over 10, that's the only thing, and I know it, I know it can go up two more times, but I've got this big row with the job centre at the moment as well. They're trying to get me to go back to work, and if I don't find something or tell them that I want something, they're going to sanction me, which means I lose my money. Right. Which is, which is not fair on me, because I know that I'm never going to work again. Because when my hands are bad, they're bad. It's, it's, it's enough to make 
just try and make a cup of coffee and then she sits there. But oh look, I burnt myself over the weekend. I said, we're not talking about you, we're talking about me. Okay. When I first had pneumonia years ago, back when I was about 40, I was working for Iceland. And I was in and out of the van, and you put the big coat on, you get to it, because you're carrying all these heavy bags. So mm. I'm sweat, 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 I've got pneumonia then. Oh, some people who they end up in those sort of situations, get yep. cold, etc., so they don't get pneumonia. There must be something making you susceptible to pneumonia. Well, I... What do you suppose that is? I haven't got a clue. You really? Me. You don't... You don't no I'm idea. tired. I've only had four hours of sleep. I had a bad night last night. A lot of the problems that um, my patients have uh, can be dealt with with other things, like exercise, diet, giving up smoking, not drinking so much. Those are the things which actually I need to be influencing and giving advice on in order to really improve the health of my patients. How many are you smoking? I've given up. Have you given up? Yeah. And this aware. might st was, smell of smoke. I wasn't aware, because last month, you, I, I think we got you down there still smoking and... No, no. I think up. I might have had the odd one or two, but that's it. Because they kept saying to me in hospital, give up. I said, I've given up. What's wrong with you people? OK. I've just done it pure willpower. Good. We'll see what effect the tablets have had um, on you, but it needs to be three months down the line. Right, okay. All right, Amanda. Thank you very much. No you. problem. All the best. Bye bye. Take care. Good afternoon, St John's Medical Centre. Sarah speaking. How can I help? No, Orlean. I don't have anything else today now. It's booked for you at ten past three, but I don't, I can't make it any earlier. Hello, Mr. Kulai. Good to see you again. Please take a seat. Sorry I'm running half an hour late today. Yeah, so... Yeah. What's been happening with your symptoms? Because yeah. you had the, quite a bit of pain, burning sensation after eating, acid yeah. in the back of your throat, yeah. worse when you lay flat, yeah. worse after alcohol. Mm -hmm. Is that all kind of, am I remembering correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And that all sounds to me very much like acid. Okay. I think you had a few concerns that it might be to do with your heart, but I hope I put your mind at ease. There's one thing I wanted to do, yeah. was I wanted to get the stool sample. Yeah. OK? Yeah. To make sure there wasn't a bacteria okay. that was causing the symptoms you were getting. Okay. But what happened yeah. was you submitted a urine sample. Yeah, yeah, urine sample, yeah. But it was meant to be a poo sample. Oh. So the urine sample, did, the, that didn't help. Oh. And then you didn't pick up the, the, the prescription. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we kind of um, haven't really moved oh, on oh, ex yeah. as I would have liked to. Okay, but okay. it's not a problem. All right. So I don't need to fast for this one, huh? No, no, no this, this is just a poo sample. Yeah. But what what, a poo sample? What is what's that? A poo. So you need to, you need to oh, poo. Oh. That's what I was. That's oh, where all the problems started. Oh, okay. You gave me a, a urine, yeah. a pee sample, yeah. but I needed a poo sample, oh. okay, a stool sample. Okay, well. So yeah, feces. <laughs> that's what we need because okay. that can tell me whether yeah, there's okay. bacteria yeah. in the stomach. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't making okay. that clear. Okay, okay. All right, no so problem, yeah. that's the key. That's okay. the key. I'd be upset yeah. if we get another yeah. urine sample. No, 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 blue, blue for poo. Yeah, blue, Easy okay. to remember. Okay, okay, okay. All right. What's his date of birth, please? And is this rash just come up where? I mean, I can do a letter for you that says about the fact you've got epilepsy and about your other conditions as well. And then you talked about your mood. Tell me more about your mood. I've been feeling really depressed lately mm. um, because of a lot of um, personal issues. Everything that pretty much could possibly go wrong in my life has. Um, I've been feeling kind of like suicidal at points as well. And yeah, and um, just sort of like come home and like cry every night pretty much and not feeling sociable at all. Don't really like go out. And um, and yeah, I just feel like really down. Mm. And then what, what specifically happened? So you said that there have been some things happening, um, but what's happened? My granddad died. And, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, my brother was stabbed. Um, my mum and my stepdad um, are getting divorced. And plus, my um, boyfriend also is um, in prison as well, so that's quite stressful. 
and just sort of I feel like I'm under a constant <laughs> battle with like my sort of conditions and stuff mm. um, and like I just feel so worried. Talk about feeling suicidal, what is it you thought about doing? Just like, because I just don't see the point of going on because I just don't have no one, no one there for me at all, just to comfort me even, not even, because I'm not really much of a talker anyway, just to like have that bit of comfort, you know, just to have a hug and say everything's going to be all right kind of thing. And um, so just, it's like ending it really. What is it you thought of doing to do that? Um, just like slitting my wrists and um, just like tucking myself under a train. <laughs> How's your sleep? Not good. I've never been a good sleeper anyway, but there's not really a lot I can do about it because of the medication that I take for my epilepsy. Yeah. And you talked about feeling suicidal. Would you react in these thoughts? Mm -hmm. Would you react in those thoughts? Um, no, because I'm not a selfish person and I know that I'd cause a lot of hurt to a lot of people if I'd done that. Mm -hmm. Because it's important if you are feeling suicidal that you need to let us know or someone else know because we don't want to see any harm coming to you. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't do that because I'm not a selfish person like that. Mm. I wouldn't do that to them. Mm. Have you suffered with depression in the past? Um. Yeah, but like not on like you know bad bad things have like gone on, but you know it's just. Not to the good way that I feel at the moment. We can refer you for counselling here if you want. I've never been a great fan of counselling because no. I don't. I'm quite a private, private person. Like I said, I'm not really much of a talker. I'm mm -hmm. just. I can take everyone else else's problems on board. Mm. Like I'm a great listener, and mm -hmm. I could just sit there for hours for someone talking to me and listening. But I'm not really. I don't really like the idea of just talking to some random person. And have you thought about any like antidepressants or medications? Is that something that you've thought about? Yeah. So one of the theories behind when people get low in the mood or depressed is that one of the chemicals in the brain is low. So antidepressants help to boost up that chemical. Quite often, you have to take them for at least a month before you might see any benefits of taking the antidepressant. You can get side effects, common side effects with antidepressants tend to be Nausea, vomiting, stomach upset, some of them can cause problems with vision as well. Okay. Okay. Antidepressants, I wouldn't say that they're a long-term solution. I think they can be good to help get people out of a rut as such, you know, in combination with other things as well, because you've got to look at different life aspects and if there's something that's making someone feel depressed, to deal with that as well. I guess it's something I can try. Yeah, are you wanting to try one? Yeah. Yeah. Quite a big proportion of our patients that will come in with you know, either depression or feeling low in their mood or anxious or in a distressed state as well. On a daily basis, I might see maybe five or six patients that are going through some sort of form of distress. Because of the other medications you're on, I just have to double check about what we can give you. Okay. I'll get back to you at lunchtime today. Okay. All right then. Okay, that's right. Yeah. All right, good to see you again. John's Medical Centre, Sarah speaking here. How can I help? I can't. I can't. I need some more details. Could you tell me what the symptoms are, please? She's coughing. So, so she's got a cough. Just breathe normally. I'm listening to your heart. Okay, good. 
chest is nice and clear, your heart sounds normal. The first thing to say is you don't need antibiotics. Okay. Um, so. What you have is a cold, so yeah, it's flu. a... It could be flu, but even if it's flu, flu is caused by a virus, um, yeah. and antibiotics don't work. work. You haven't got no antibiotic I can take for sore throat? No, it wouldn't work. Really? Yeah, the effects all throat's going to get better on its own in two, two three days. Serious? No antibiotics? That's what I've come up for. I'm afraid I've got bad news for you. Cough can last ten days to a fortnight at least. Uh -oh. Giving antibiotics doesn't help the course. No antibiotics for the moment. Self-help, steam, lozenges. OK. But That's... I haven't got any magic wand. <laughs> Just say, ah. Oh. Ah. Uh... Wow. That is pretty clear-cut. So the, that tonsillitis is so bad, you definitely need antibiotics. I mean, that's a clear-cut case. So if any one of your friends asks you, you know, doctors don't like to get antibiotics, that's the kind of classic case where you need antibiotics. It's pus, it's very swollen, yeah. your glands are clearly up. If those tonsils get any bigger, yeah. like, if you actually find that, you get a kind of, ooh, that kind of noise, yeah. any hint of a noise like that, you have to take yourself down to A&E. Does uh, the fact that smoking affect it? Smoking's not going to help it one bit. Had any thoughts about quitting smoking at all? Yeah, I'll try it for a week. You tried it for a week. How much? How many would you smoke a day? Twenty a day. Twenty a day. Before the, before you're thirty. Yeah. If you just stop now, that's twenty six thousand eight hundred sixty three pounds. Yeah. Is how much pleasure does smoking really give you? Comes the stress. Not as much as a twenty-six thousand pound holiday, all in you know, all expensive plate. Yeah, but that's like in ten years. Though. Well, but this is still real. Great! What a gap! Woohoo! Somebody not turned up. Marvelous. Perhaps I can grab a coffee. Yeah. I'm going to go and eat some cake now. Bit of get ox. I can hardly say, do I? My mum passed away last year, February. I haven't really grieved. I ain't seen counselling or breathing classes. I just haven't got time, to be honest. And that's me being honest. And I've got to be strong for my kids. Um, I come up with some little rash just before Christmas. And I'm trying to keep my stress levels down, but my armpits are sore where it's flaring up the air now. Um, Crease my arms, it's sore. My neck is sore. My face is sore. And it's, that is stressing me out because my eyelids are getting itchy and sore. But my face has taken a piss. That, I'm going to get stressed because it's really tender now. Yeah. OK. Do you want to pop your jacket off and let's start by having a look at your, your arms? <clears throat> I've never suffered from allergies. I, I don't know what's caused it. I don't think, I've dealt with stress since I was eight. My mum's had asthma, diabetes, high blood pressure, blood clots, arthritis and rheumatism. I've dealt with stress. I've never had nothing like this. It's already sore, especially this part of my belly. Yeah. It's like it's um, inflamed. And I don't know what it is. My friends keep telling me it's not psoriasis, but I don't know. I've never had skin allergies. Yeah, but so there's different, there's different types of psoriasis that you can get, and uh, where you get the big flaky bits, that's called chronic plaque psoriasis. This, is, this looks like a slightly different version of psoriasis. Um, is this common? Um, no, no, I mean, the, by far the more common version is the chronic plaque psoriasis. This is different, yeah, and, and um... Will this go away or am I stuck like this for life? No, 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 I, I, we, will, this, we will get rid of this for you. Don't worry, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be better than it is. This, this is not satisfactory for me or you. <laughs> Ella, this one's a girl and you called that. Who is she? The same one that you just spoke to. What does she want now? The same thing she's same, arguing about. Same question, Ella, same question. The mean? answer doesn't change. Yeah, as you call back. Yeah. Like, oh, um, which day did I last come to the surgery? That might have been the dad, you know, that phone, because the dad sounds like a woman. No, the daughter. The dad's got, she's got very a woman. Like, because, very family. because one time at a courtesy, I phoned them about Dr. Parker's appointments. And he went on and on um. and on. I mean, psoriasis, if we're, if we're treating it correctly, it improves, but it doesn't improve, like, in a week. It takes, like, four or five weeks of sustained treatment, which That's is That's what I heard. It would take three, five weeks. That's what the hospital told me, five, six weeks. 
the one thing that I would add in, which you haven't had yet, is um, a steroid. And I think that would really help with the soreness and the redness. OK. As, hopefully, these, the sun comes out a bit more, um, and, and uh, we will encourage you to get out in the sunlight a bit more as well, because sunlight helps to improve this as well. Um, that sunbed? I don't, I've never used it before, but I jump on out of that and get rid of it. <laughs> well, I'm serious. No, I don't need to use it, but I jump on it if it, if it gets rid of this. Um, yeah, it, it probably would. It probably would. It would probably help. Yeah. Okay. That's not to say go mad on sunbeds. No, I wouldn't go mad. I don't need to go mad. I've got an all year round tan. Never, <laughs> never pills, never fades. But this is annoying because I don't suffer no allergies. We, we, we will see what happens in, over the next couple of weeks. Like I said, if you feel it's getting worse, just come back and we'll get you seen by the skin specialists. Okay, then. Great. And, um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, coming back to, you know, the stress that triggered it all off, I mean, it is your mum, the loss of your mum, is that something that you think you would like to help with at some point? Or? Um, to be honest, I do security. I do between 60, maybe 80 hours a week. I physically ain't got time. Yeah, ain't got time. Yeah. Life's in the way. But I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I know my mum will want me to be strong. Really filly boots. Go! Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm all right. Last time we met, you were due to go back and speak to the surgeons about the the operation for your colitis. Any further thoughts about whether you would consider the surgery? You know, I don't want to have the surgery. Mm. <laughs> I don't want, you know, they want to take all of my bowel out. I know. It's just wrong, you know. I don't want to be, you know, abnormal person. It's better if I go with my sickness and die one time. That's good, yeah. But I don't want to look, I don't want to look, you know, uh, someone who is abnormal to have a bug several times. I don't want it, I don't want it. Mm. You know, I, I will, I hope that I will uh, get better or die, you know. Think about it this way. I will, I you will. Know, if I you know, if you have an operation, mm. you don't have to worry about being up five, six times a night always needing to be near a toilet, constant blood uh, and the diarrhea. All of these experts, they're pointing towards the same thing. Mm. Yes, you'll have a bag, mm. but in day-to-day -day life, mm. you know, that's something that you'll become accustomed to. Mm. You know only what you think, but still I believe that I will get something before that. What Steve, do you mean? Uh, I, you know, or some technology will come or it okay. comes by itself, so maybe it will go by itself. That's a very optimistic point of view. Mm -hmm. However, we haven't seen any miracles yet. There are no cures. This has been the standard management for many years. Mm, I will think about it. Let me think about it. Let me see. Yes, it has not any other option, then, of course, I will go. But let me, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let me take a letter. Would it be possible to see a doctor today? It's been serious. I found some blood in the urine. OK. It's a bit worrying, you know. How are you feeling today? When I'm lying and I just keep tossing and turning in the bed, they work because of the pain. The, the bandage just go down, you know what I mean? And sometimes when it goes down, it gets tight down the bottom. Is it painful still down here? To be honest with you, it's painful from the stump of the big to go round. Mm, oh. I've um, injured my foot. I went um quite a long walk on Saturday and I think the boots are rubbing on the this big toe. It was a massive blister. Let's have a look at it. What I think we'll do, because it's a hot, sweaty area, yeah. you've got an open wound, there's a huge potential for germs to get in. Right. And what concerns me is if there is a bit of redness, yeah. is this the first signs of an infection? infection. 
So what, what I'm going to do, Mr Fritz, this, this bit over here, just going to put a bit of inodine on that, OK? Twice a day, yeah. you put that foot in hot, soapy water, not yeah, too yeah. hot, so you wash it really thoroughly. Yes. Then you dab it dry or use a hairdryer to dry it. Yes, yes. So that it's completely dry. Yeah. And then you put the antibiotic cream that yes. I'm going to give you, and then you can cover it with a, a suitable, appropriate plaster. OK. You OK? Yeah, come on. This is just on lightly, OK? There you go. You feeling OK? I never feel OK, really, will I? Oh. Doesn't hurt there? No. Doesn't hurt? Yeah. Could you do me a wee? No. Yes. Right. No time like the present. My name is Dee. And, then, you, and you too. Now, this is just a health check, a very basic health check, OK? OK. If you have any medical problems, then it would be a GP that you make an appointment with, OK? Yeah. So, where have you moved from? From Greece. Straight to London? Straight to London. Oh, how long have you been here? About uh, four months. What do you think? I love it. Do you? Yeah, I love English people in London. What made you decide to come and live? Here? Uh, it's so big, your country is so big and there are many opportunities. Yeah, and, true. And uh, the thing is that you are organised. <laughs> Do you I, think so? Yeah, <laughs> I like organised countries. Oh. All done, all done, all done. All done. Finish. All done. Finish. 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 I've had an awful lot of trouble with this printer here. Just don't seem to be able to get it to work. So what's wrong with this? Oh, my God. Oh. You don't know how to use none of the yeah. equipment them in here. Yeah, no, you and have all to... you girls... Sure, sure. Before. You're trying to hide? Mm -hmm. Huh? Are you trying to hide from me? <laughs> Come and have a seat. <laughs> Hello. Oh. How are you these days? Oh, well... Most things are fine. Yes. Same old, same old. My sleep oh. is terrible and I've not had a good night's sleep for a couple of years. You've got to a sort of certain age now. Oh, God, yeah. Do you think... You've, do you think the menopause has got anything to do with this? Oh, yes, I do. Are you but getting hot I flushes? Um, I, I was. Sometimes it helps. Um, you know, to cope with the lack of sleep, uh, to, to have some, what we call some talking therapy. Yeah. Um, we've got some superb counsellors. If only just to sort of help focus on, you know, how you feel and how you can cope when you haven't got any energy and yes, you time. can't get through work. You know, if up here is not at peace with the world... Yeah. How can you expect to get a good night's sleep? Yeah. OK, well, have a think about it. Right. But let me put this to you. We're not superhuman. And just sometimes we need something to kickstart us into feeling better. Yes, yes. I know, I've known you long enough to know that, actually, you have been coming to me with this problem. Yes. And perhaps now's the time to try different tacks. Yes. How does it affect you? Like, do you, do you are you aware of it? Are you conscious about it, or does it not bother you? Doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother you. Okay, <laughs> good. I don't know. Did my, did my colleague tell you it's called pityriasis alba? Yes. Yeah. yeah. With this type of pityriasis alba, unfortunately, there's nothing that we really know kind of makes it better it's or worse. Maybe antibiotic, maybe. It's not anything to do with a bacteria or an infection or anything like that. It's getting better and hopefully at some point it will be gone. Yeah, really? What I will do, I'll give you a tiny little bit of hydrocortisone, 1%. Okay. And you can put it just on these patches around 
there. Not around the eye, because the eye is very thin, but just for three days, just once a day, just for three days, and then don't use it again. And just see if that makes any difference. Some people say it does. Any other questions? Is there anything that's worrying you, you at all? If you need anything, question, just put it in soak. No. Are you, are you interested in um, anything to do with those leaflets? Hi. Your mum will be even more worried. <laughs> Do you? I want to read it. Okay. Are you just re reading out those for interest or is there something you want to talk to me about? No. You sure? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Well, the door's always open if you ever want to come back and talk to me about anything from my broad selection of uh, but information. But you still young for know about that? Yeah, I think so, I think so. You'd be surprised how frequently patients will come in and they won't actually tell their doctor why they're there. And it's, it's, it's really important that we know about that. And we do have a term for it, it's called you know, the, the, the hidden agenda. Essentially, your main tool for everything is listening and there will always be cues. So you basically just tick that box and hand it in. They'll, they'll pull tell us off and just hand it in. Okay. okay, when you need another one. Also, the body language. If someone looks uneasy or they're you know, avoiding eye contact, you just pick up on things. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Do you want to talk to me about it? No, I just need it. Can you just give me one second? I'm going to ask your mum. Do you mind if I have a chat with you alone for one second? Yeah. Without your mum, would that be all right? Do you mind if I just have a quick chat with Sam and Semi Solo alone just for five minutes? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's really important that uh, young people and children feel able to speak openly. Um, to their GP, and sometimes that'll be about things that they certainly wouldn't want to speak openly about with their parents, for example. Um, and you know, I think it is important sometimes, um, even if someone is, say, you know, under under the age of 16, um, to have a moment of privacy. So, the ones you were looking at were these two. What was it that made you think that you might need some of these? I don't need them. I just need to get something. I can't reach it. Get, get, what do you mean, get something? I dropped something. Whereabouts? In the heater. And you want one of these? I need to get it. I've dropped my 50 pin. I need to get it. OK. So you don't need anything? You don't know what these are all about? And you don't no. think you need what these are? Just grab them. All right, OK. But obviously, yes, yeah, sometimes we, uh, we, our intuition uh, isn't spot on. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'd rather you didn't use my, my information leaflets to get your 50p. Maybe try a ruler. Do you have a ruler at school? Yes. Maybe use your school ruler or something like that. Would that work? Yes. All right. By all means, have that. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Cheers. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Okay. Take care. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Has she offered any explanation as to why she's, what, 25 minutes late? 25 minutes late. I mean, ha I'll see her, I'll see her, it's fine. OK, bye. body a bit like a car it's got to be looked after it's going to go wrong from time to time so you take it to the garage for people with those symptoms we'd normally examine your back passage okay, okay. have you ever had that done before mm -hmm. where are you talking about is it the skin the vagina? Right, the, right there like a little paper split okay who was it who you, you hit? My friend, who the security guard. He does that thing. <laughs> nah. And he doesn't want to grab them and kill the Is that 
1030 Dr. Opong. Opong. O P O N G. Okay, bye. What can I do for you today? Right, um, I don't know how it's happened, but I've cut myself underneath and my testicles are really, really swollen. Okay. Yeah, it's very, very uncomfortable. I sleep in the nod, yeah. I don't know, maybe there was something in the bed that I didn't realise was in there, I don't know, but it's very, really, really sore. The wife's obviously put some cream right there, but the pain's really, I, I, I can't bear the pain anymore. Swollen and sore, and is the pain constant or do you get sudden jolts of pain? Describe no, that to me. Concert. An aching pain? I wouldn't say an aching pain. Um, I feel like that I'm going to pass out. Tell me about when you go for a wee. It's, it's very uncomfortable when I go to the toilet. Around your groin or the testicles no, or the, the penis? Tes no, the penis and the testicles. And is it a burning? It's like a burning pain, but a sharp pain. It's like someone's poking me, we think. All right. What we'll do is we'll examine you um, and get you to do a urine sample. Do you think you could go to the loo? Yeah, of course we can. Oh. Is it tender at all? Mm -hmm. So you say you're having bubbling urine? Yeah. Come on in, Brian. I'm very well, thank you. What can I do to help you today, then? Right. I'm starting to be a bit irate, right? Mm. I've had a confrontation on Thursday. I filled him in, right? I punched him in the face, and that's made me scared, because I'm not dangerous like that, right? As you know, and you've got it on your record. Who was it who you, you hit? My friend, who's the security guard, I'm trying to calm down. Yeah. Because it's all my nervous system, mm. from my fingers here to my toes, and um, especially in my head. It's like it's on fire inside and all that, you know what I mean? So, so let, me just, let me just check that I've understood this right, Brian. Yeah. So at the moment, you're finding that you're feeling a lot more, more tense and, yes. and angry at the moment at the world. Very angry, that's right. And you, yeah. you, you have this tendency to lash out at people when you're, when you're feeling that way. It's mainly frustration, that's yes. right. That's what is causing it mainly. Okay. Because... Do you think that mentally you're not coping as well at the moment for some reason? Because ordinarily it's not in your nature to get this angry and, and, and hurt people. No. So is it is something making it a bit harder for you to... Yeah. To yeah. tolerate people at the yeah, moment. Yeah, that's right. Because oh, and I, what do you think yeah, that is? I, it's a bigger camera and uh, and what he's doing really, and all these idiots he's got around him. You know, you know, it's really annoying me. And my mobile phone company, I, they know I'm blind and all that. They keep sending me text messages and I can't read them. Not particularly useful. I, 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 so I find that's taking the piss out of my disability. Mm. You know. Mm. You know, and that upset me. He does that thing. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't want to grab them and kill the <laughs> The NHS computer system is absolute crap. I can't get into my computer. It doesn't like my, um... No, no, that's, um... That's your what you go on at the beginning, isn't it? Yes, well, that's what I was trying to get in no, on that. that's not that one. Yes, is it, it is. I can't, I can't understand him starting late. Now yes. it's doing it. That's your card code. That's the number I always yeah, do. Yeah, so you're no. going into it now. now let's, no, we're not. Not yet. Don't, don't be so optimistic. You're not in until you're in, Chris. All right, so... There yeah, you are swollen, aren't you? OK. I'm just going to lift up, yeah. see underneath. Where was the cut you saw? Uh, just right about, about here, I think it is. Yeah, uh, right there. Ooh. Let's get you seated again. What do you think it is, Doctor? I think there's probably an infection in your testicles. There's a little bit of blood in your urine, uh, which might be 
an indicator of infection. So two weeks of antibiotics, then you'll see Dr. Ferdinand. Right. Obviously, if things get worse in the interim, come back sooner. Yeah. Once this infection has settled, we can bring you back and then have a, a proper examination yeah. to make sure there aren't any lumps and bumps that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Um, OK, that's your prescription. So um, let's just see how you get on. Yeah, that's that. Send them and find out. OK. Okay. Oh, OK, Thank mine. you very much. Mind how you go. Cheers. Bye-bye. Don't touch anything. No, not until I can Don't see it touch on the anything. page. You're in, you're in. No, it's not yet. It is. It not is. yet. Wait. It's in. Why does it do it? I don't know. It hasn't done it for me. So how are you going to bring yourself down to help you calm down a bit and relax a little bit well, more. Well, that's why I've come to see you, really. Yes. We need something to um, sedate me or, you know, not to put me out like that, you know. Yes. But something milder, if you like, you know. I was just looking at your medications in the past. Yeah. And um, back in 2011, you took a lanzapine for a period of time. And that's a tablet we sometimes use to calm people down. Maybe a tablet like that would help, would it? Um, I wonder. I'm not sure I want to use that now. With regards to mental health, um, obviously there are medications which we can use, but I think they are not always the best and first thing that should be turned to. And there are um, other things that can be done, such as um, counselling, other therapies, good lifestyle choices like eating well, exercise. These are all things that can have a really positive impact on mental health. It's, it's frightening, really, in one okay. sense. I don't want to be a nuisance to you and the public. You know, I don't want no convictions or, or no violence at mm. all in my life, you know. I don't want to shoot someone, mm. like my doctor or anybody. Oh, well, yeah. Really. Say ah for me. Uh. Why did you can't say ah? OK, say, ah. Uh, say, ah. 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 Look up for Daddy. Show him the back of your Say, ah. 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 Roar again. Say, ah. Uh. Ah. OK. <laughs> say, ah again. Ah. Uh. OK. How are you sleeping at the moment? Sleeping. I normally go to bed about three, three o'clock. So I'm getting about a couple of three hours a, a night, and that's about it. Really. What's so keeping I, you up till three in the morning? Well, all I'm doing is watching the telly. The telly's rubbish after midnight, though. <laughs> the TV and all that is is a voice, you know. So I feel comfort from it. Mm. Would you say you feel lonely? No. No? No, I'm not lonely, no. No? I like my own space. OK. And I like to be on my own. But so you're happy in that respect? Oh, in that respect, I'm really happy and all that. In, in 2010, when you were feeling quite, quite low, you were hurting yourself. How did you harm yourself back in 2010? Do you remember? I get my knife from the kitchen. Yeah? And cut in, you were cutting your arm. Cutting my wrist. Right. And all that up there. You, you, you're and, not thinking and, about and doing it. And your knees. But you're not thinking. And your knees. Right. And stabbing the knife in your, in your leg. Right. And saying, yeah, feel that, you twat, you know. Feel this, and, you know, and all this, you know. Which is so, which is dangerous and self harm. Yeah. Right, which you shouldn't be doing. Are you doing anything like that no. at the moment to yourself? You're not no, harming no, yourself. No, 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 I'm not cutting my arms or putting marks on me. No. Do you think it would be worthwhile speaking to someone about how you're feeling at the moment and about these feelings of frustration and yes. anger you're feeling? Yes, I think mean, that would be great. OK. I, I, I can arrange that. I can, I can do that oh, by referring you somewhere called Southbrook Road. They're the um, Community Mental Health Trust. Oh, you don't have to be a mental to go there. God, no, no, no. Vast, the vast majority of people who go there um, actually yeah, enjoy pretty well. good mental health. It's just sometimes some people need a little bit of help. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Ah, OK. OK. Well done, mate. All good, you know. Indeed. All right, let's, yeah. let's hey, hope no, you gather your things up. Well, Brian, Thank you all the best. Are you going to be OK finding your way out? Yeah. Good. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, who can help you today? I just got a bit of a lump under my chin. You can have a go on it if you want. It's just there. Yeah. To me, it doesn't feel like anything sinister. Cool. Thank you. Want to have a seat? How are you? Mm, OK. OK? Fine. I feel fine in myself, yeah. We have some results to go to. Is this why you've come? Yes. I hope so. <clears throat> yes. I tested you for diabetes. Mm -hmm. No signs of that. Blood count, no anemia. Kidney function, fine. Cholesterol level, no. It's, um... 6.7. The upper end of normal should be five. Okay. It's a measure of the sort of fat that's floating around in your body, and we, we get excited about it because we know it's one of the big risk factors, sure. that and blood pressure and smoking, mm -hmm. for heart disease. I suppose the first thing to say is, what's your diet like? Vegetables. Yeah. Vegetables and fish. Vegetables and cakes. <laughs> <laughs> got to have some naughty days you can't <laughs> you can't say no to cakes completely <clears throat> but actually cakes are what we call quick fixes you get a sudden burst Fresh, yeah. of sugar mm. but it doesn't last if you were to take your carbohydrates in the form of something like say porridge in the morning that'll keep you going because it's releasing the sugar slowly so, yeah. so porridge cereals pasta they're all releasing their sugars slowly. If only there was a magic portion or something for weight, eh? Yes, there's no magic wand, is there, for weight? But diet, losing weight and exercise can actually reduce your cholesterol levels. Yeah, I, should, I mean, I know I, exactly what I should and shouldn't be doing, so yeah. I'll give it a go and I'll try. Give it a go. Mm -hmm. You sure. can actually get 12 weeks of free Weight Watchers. <laughs> Just think about it. Yeah, definitely. I can see you. OK? OK. We'll see you soon. Good. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. I hope she does something about it. All right, so that's five o'clock then. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. I've got my thing tonight, you know. My Weight Watchers start tonight. Excuse me, please. This, this is my area. I can't breathe. That's why you go Weight Watchers. Oh, leave me. <laughs> and my stomach hurts most times. That's the head man's pain in me. Mm. Yeah. Do you get any feeling like being sick, vomiting? No, or... no, no, I just feel pain. Yeah. Like that, I'm feeling pain. How has your weight been? My weight is all right. Yeah. And how about your appetite? Yeah, it's OK. Any diarrhoea? No. Blood coming out sometimes. Blood? Yeah. Is it in the toilet bowl, the blood? No, no. So it's only when you're wiping? Yeah. Yeah. Because of the symptoms you're having, would it be OK for me to examine you? Yeah. So I need to check your stomach. Yeah. The other thing is, because you're having bleeding from your back passage... Yeah. For people with those symptoms, we'd normally examine your back passage. OK. OK? Have you ever had that done before? No. OK. Now, I'd need to take a look at your back passage. Now, obviously, I'd have some gloves on. And then, using some gel, I would examine your your back passage with my finger. No problem. OK? Are you OK for me to yeah, do that? that's fine. Do you want a chaperone? Are you happy for me to go ahead? Do, do you want someone to chaperone while I do that exam? Yeah, yeah. No, do you want someone to, to be in the room whilst no, I do that exam? No, that's all right. Yeah. OK. So first, I'm just going to take a look at your stomach. OK. OK. For all intimate examinations, we would offer a chaperone to people. Because quite often your patients might come to practice with a range of different symptoms and they wouldn't expect to do a personal exam because that's not, maybe not what they had in their mind. So I'm just going to gently press. Yeah. Yeah. Just a sec. Lie on your left hand side, yeah? And then let me know when you're ready. I should take my time off, yeah? Well, you can just lower them, just so I can see your, the, your back passage, essentially. Tuck your knees up towards your chest. I wouldn't say it's difficult to do an intimate examination, because you, it's something that you do throughout your training, so you do get used to doing intimate examinations. And that's why it's important that you're reassuring the patient that this is actually quite a normal thing, and there's no need to feel awkward about it. OK, so I'm just applying some jelly to your bottom end. It'll feel quite cold. And now I'm just gently advancing my finger through. 
this. Okay, so if you want to get dressed and then come back outside. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what's causing that blood sometimes. You've got a small a pile, which is what's causing the bleeding. Have you heard that term before, hemorrhoid? That's how I was thinking. Okay, so around your bottom end, you've got quite a lot of vein, veins there. They carry blood, essentially. So sometimes when people get symptoms of, say, constipation yeah. as such, have you felt constipated yourself? Yeah. You have been? Okay. So it can give you symptoms of bleeding. So there are different things you can do to try and help those symptoms. Yeah. One thing is eating more fibre in your diet. There are some creams that I can prescribe for you okay. that you could apply to your back passage okay. to try and help those symptoms as well. Okay. 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 Yeah. Hello, this is Dr. Ferdinand calling from St. John's Medical Centre. You know, we took a, a couple of urine samples from you last week. They came back negative for chlamydia and gonorrhea, so there was no evidence of those. I can't sit here and tell you that you definitely don't have prostate cancer, but at the same time, you're within normal range now, which is fantastic. You brought that right down. They did a lot of random biopsies and your IBS-like symptoms are just IBS. They're not colon cancer. That's fantastic news. Thank you. Thank you. We're in business. Yeah, it's normal. OK, thanks. Bye. It's normal. Your chest X-ray is normal. So, last time I saw you, you had this problem with your toe. That's right. And, I, went and um, I was a bit worried about it. I asked you to get some blood tests to check for diabetes. And um, I'm sorry to tell you today that um, your blood sugar results did come back very high. Very high. Oh, OK. Yeah. So, so it's I'm, looking like diabetes. I'm afraid so. In fact, I'm certain you have diabetes. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is... It is a serious diagnosis yes, because it's, it's such a wide-ranging condition. The fact that the sugars affect your eyes, cool. yeah, affect your yeah, kidneys, yeah. and diabetes is in itself a risk factor for heart yeah. disease. Right. Yeah, it's not something to be taken lightly, but at the no, same time, at the age of 60, the, you know, we've got lots of years, hopefully, to get, get, get in control of things. Type 1 diabetes is a failure of the body to produce insulin, which is a hormone that regulates um, your blood sugar levels. And type 2 diabetes is a resistance to insulin. So the insulin that you do produce doesn't have the same effect. Undoubtedly, type 2 diabetes is a serious diagnosis, but there aren't many conditions where the patient themselves has so much control over how things will progress and reduce the chances of serious things happening massively. Now, the way we go about treating that is, first of all, um, we give some tablets. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest thing is the things you do in your lifestyle, so diet is absolutely key. Yes, plus I'm a drinker, so uh, will that be knocked on the head or...? What, what do you drink? Mainly um, lager. OK, I was worried you were going to say that. So, I mean, alcohol in general isn't going to help you. No, of course not. But they've, all these alcohols have high sugar content, yeah, especially yeah, a pint of that. lager. I thought that, yeah. OK. I, I can still work, though, can't I? What do you do for a living? I work on the construction sites. Um, yeah, so... Because that's having, my living, yeah. I need to get money. Yeah, having life. diabetes is not going to stop you from no, being sure. able to work on the, yeah. on the, on the site. Yeah. But you need oh. to also be aware of just what's happening with your blood sugars, course, because, yeah. I mean, we're talking about the rest of your life, 30-odd yeah, sure, years, yeah. we need to get, get this diabetes under control, mm -hmm. and that will take you time to, to, to manage your diet and yeah. to figure out what's bad, what's good. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's, that's all you need from me in terms of paperwork for now. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a prescription now as well. Right. We might need a couple of different tablets to get your sugars under control. Do your fist for me. Now I've got a pinch an inch. All right? Keep your belly nice and relaxed, mm. OK? Mm. Very good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sharp scratch. Right. Any allergies to anything that you're aware of? No. High blood pressure? No. High cholesterol? No. Thrombosis, clots in the legs or the lungs? No. Diabetes? No. Glaucoma? No. 
and breast cancer. No. Have you ever had HIV screening? Um, I think I did, but it was years ago. Right. Do you want me to do it today? Yeah. Yeah? Today. Let me feel your hands. Are you warm? So this is an instant result. All right. One dot is negative and two would be positive. When I had me eyes test, he didn't he's in there saying to me, well, you might think you do me losing weight. I said, yeah, mate, I'm 66. Oh, no. Can't be doing no dollars. Oh, mate, no. Nice to see you anyway. And you haven't seen you for a long time. Well, don't come in, Rob, do I? I don't blame you. Take care. See you soon. Bye. There you go, you've got a nice negative dot there. Phew! <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how many people suddenly think when you when you say to them, oh, it's a test, you can have the results straight away, they go, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean now? What about chlamydia screening? Have you had chlamydia screening recently? Not recently. Do you want to do that as well? You can do that yourself. OK. What you do for that is you just go to the toilet, wipe yourself, pop that much into the vagina, and then in the pot. Okay. All right, and the toilet's right opposite. Hi, is it Mr. Strong? Hi, there. please come in. What can I do for you? I'm here about my coil. Okay. That I've had in over five years. Um, okay. Were you hoping to have it taken out today? No, I want to keep it in. All oh, right, okay. If you can. Fine. I think, to be honest with you, if you've had it in for five years, it's better to, to, to come out. Mm. Okay. I've been fine with it. I've had fine. I mean, the last set of blood tests that they did suggested that you might be um, postmenopausal now. I and mean, at 53, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah, I would expect that to be the case. So, as in, your periods might have stopped now. So, rather than leave this in for a long period of time, mm -hmm. more than the recommended uh, time frame, my gut instinct is it should probably come out. Your, okay, I've had the menopause. That's what the blood test would indicate. I haven't got no hot flushes or anything. Not everyone does get hot flushes. Not everyone, a lot of everyone right? finds it, you know, difficult. But that's some people. Yeah, the menopause affects people in very various mm -hmm. different ways. The hot flushes. I'm not really too bad on that. I might get the one, maybe a month, if that. Yeah, no, I don't get the hot right, flushes. Right, so I don't get the hot flushes really and truly. I don't experience that. Um, but what I've noticed with myself is that I'm so snappy. Yeah, me too. Bad tempered. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I want to kill anyone who gets yeah. it. It's just, it's not even funny because it's like I have to check myself sometimes. Yeah, do you know no, what I mean? Of course. It's not because somebody will say to you, why did you do that? And you think, did I? Did Donald, you know that you did. It's got to be menopausal. Yeah. <laughs> Was there anything else you wanted to ask about? Was that it today? Um, what's this up? I know it's like having, you know, your my vagina in there. Mm. You know, that bridge bit, it keeps splitting now and again. Okay. Like a paper tear. What a rough drawing, where are you talking about? Is it the back passage or is it actually the, the, the skin, the vagina? Right on the, uh, right on the, um, the muscle bit in the middle there. Like a little paper split. OK, it's... and does it bleed? No. Um, is it just very sore? Mm. OK. Well, that might all correlate to the fact that you might be postmenopausal now. Mm. You can get vaginal atrophy postmenopausally, where because you don't have the oestrogen going around, the oh. vagina will actually get a bit dry mm. and actually can shrink and you, know, you can get mm. problems there. So um, I think this is all kind of part and parcel of the same picture, really. My gut instinct is that we take the coil out, we can start giving you some oestrogen cream to, for the vagina that should keep it supple and avoid getting further kind of tears or, you know, irritation and things like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. How are you? Not good, Doctor. I keep feeling terribly sick, nauseous, and then I get a cold sweat, and then I get a terrible pain across the top of my eye here, just on the one side. The pain don't go away. I've tried every tablet, and it's... Even to touch it, it's sensitive. Mm. OK. So when did this start? I've had it for a couple of weeks now. It's continuously coming and going. Mm. And how would you describe the pain? It's just... It's like a tithic in my head. It's, if you touch it even there, it's so sensitive. Yes, so it's the pain that you can make yeah. worse by yeah. touching yeah. it. Just by touching it. Right, oh, may I check your blood pressure, please? Yeah. Yes. Do you know what it is, Doctor? Well, I think it's a migraine. Oh, I've never had them before. Is there anything else going on in your life that you... 
I'm just down all mm, the time, constantly. And I'm going to, today to, what do you call the people, the psychologists? Yes. That's Are you worrying thing. about that? It seems strange, you know, I don't know. What's your biggest fear? I just feel that it makes me inadequate if I'm attending something like that, do you know what I mean? I feel a bit worthless and a bit silly. OK. We could look at it a different way round, though, couldn't we? Think about your body a bit like a car that has to be serviced, it's got to be looked after, it's going to go wrong from time to time. Yeah, true. Love so you take it to the garage, yeah, that's and the garage has a look, has to do some tests. Mm. And then they'll come and tell you, they say, well, look, actually, there's nothing really seriously wrong, it's just a little bit of a loose this, that or the other. Or they might say, unfortunately, there's lots wrong and you're going to need to buy a new engine or whatever. Yeah. It's hard to imagine the rest of the body behaving normally yeah. if up here is in a turmoil. Yeah, I feel low and down sometimes. And I think, yes. Well, and I think that that's one of the reasons we thought you might want to try an antidepressant. Yeah. Stress and depression are the bread and butter of our work. Very common indeed. And stress can be very important in many different illnesses. If I'm looking at a condition that somebody has, I might say, yes, this is the physical condition that they have, but what about the psychological element that could be making it worse? You know, this headache, this migraine, if you like, it's the way your body is showing that it's under stress. But what we've got to try and address is what's causing it in the, the first place. The thing, yeah. It's just been everything. Just keep talking to yourself and say, look, I haven't got anything to worry about at the moment because we don't know the facts. Yeah. So put that bit of anxiety in an envelope... And seal it up. ..and seal it up, OK? And concentrate on what is working well. I can do this, I can do that. I mean, that. I feel quite fit, do you know what yes, I mean? And I yes. think, well, I'm going to be 69 this year and I still feel quite good. Do you Absolutely. Know what I mean? Keep and on I think with that. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing quite right. And try to just sort of enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. Try to wallow in the good things in life. I've got to try and fill every day with something that's going to be beneficial to me, even just going for a walk. You've got to do things that are going to make you happy and that you enjoy. Yeah. Not bar of chocolate. Yes, what a good idea. Yeah. Now, can you keep still and let me do your blood pressure, do you think? Oh, yes, I mean, this is definitely uh, stress, isn't it? Yeah. Right. These little tablets you take for the sick feeling, yeah. right? Yeah. And. I'm proposing we give you the slightly stronger cocodamol to take, right? I hope you feel a bit better sooner, and I hope it's helped to have a little chat about things. Thank you, Jen. I'll make an appointment next yes. week to see if these have helped me as well. Yes. Thank you very much. OK. Bye. Bye-bye. How are you today, sir? You're feeling particularly low at the moment. How have you been in yourself? I'm trying to cope, but still, because it's still the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it hard? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. sometimes. What's happened recently to make this the, the worst day of your life? OK. Well, look, I'm booking you in for an appointment at 3.40. You're not a hypochondriac. Take care. Bye-bye. Now, he can be a bit squiffy for a few days with this, all right? So, if he's a bit loose, don't worry. Mm. <laughs> You've got such a hard life. Oh. Right, so, sit him like that, nice and relaxed, yeah? Yes. Yeah. OK. I'm trying to be. Well, you're doing very well. Right, I'm not going to look, so no, tell just me when you're doing it. Relax, just relax, OK? He's going to... My heart is beating. It's all right. <laughs> oh. All right. You're doing well, you're doing well. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's all done, look, see? Oh. oh. 
when somebody wants me to hold their baby for them, I can feel just as nervous. Yes, Tom. Oi, mister. Oh, I'll get away with you. <laughs> All right. All right, mummy's sorry, mummy's sorry. Four weeks' time. What's he got to get done then? He has his second diphtheria oh. tetanus and he's managed out sea. And Great he has. Injection. Yeah. Gosh, I can't do it. Look, he's all right now. He's just whinging now. You're fine. Man up. <laughs> Come here, give us a cuddle. What you like? What you like? Hey? Eh? I've always been able to communicate with children. Um, you see them evolve, and one child, she wouldn't even come in the door. She'd sit in her buggy at the door, and I'd say to her mum, just leave the door open, that's fine, she can stay there if she doesn't want to come in. And then the next time she came, she came in and she stayed in the buggy. And then I've met that child all the way through, and now she's an adult working, and I still bump into her, and we get on really well, and I've seen her develop as a, as a child into a young woman, and it's great. Right, what time do you want? 9.30? That's perfect. Are you all right there, you hand down my cleavage, mister? My dog does that. He does that all the time. No matter who it is, he does it. You've got to let them develop. And that's what I love. I think they're so funny. Thank you. Are we going to get a smile before you go so your mummy knows you're all right? Look, he's, he's fine now. Did you, did you have a problem with your medication? Uh-huh. OK. OK, you're welcome. Take care. Bye. Hello. I'm still limping. You're still limping, Ian? Yeah. Is it no better at all, then? No, oh, no, not for that. It's not gone down at all, really. Right. Uh, they phoned me up this morning, sir. Can I come back to work today? No, but you can't come back to work. Uh, they want me back this morning. They warned you back? Yeah. Come in. Hello. Hello. Um, so, uh, you mentioned the lump. Yeah. Let me see it. So, whereabouts do you feel your pain? It's around there. Well, it's around there. Yeah. OK. So it's been a little over two weeks now, yeah. and the pain's no better at all. No. If you come lie down, I can have a, I can work out whether it's your hip or your, uh, or your knee that's causing the problem. Right, so bend your knee for me. Hang on, hang on, relax. Just relax. Let me, let me move your knee. Can you bend your, your hip a bit more as well? No. Does your hip come up any higher? No, it's how high up it comes up. That's as high as it goes. All right. Does that hurt? Yeah. Yeah. Can you sit? Can you sit on, on the edge of the couch? Might be easier for you if we get you to sit. Right, that's right. Just oh, does that does that hurt? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's let's get you up. Sorry. Right. Didn't mean to cause you discomfort. I think the problem is your hip, Ian. Because your knee seems to be moving quite well. Yeah. And it's your your hip that's actually really struggling to uh, yeah. to get much movement out of. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think maybe we should get you referred to see the specialists about your knee and your hip. All right, then. Yeah, do you want a tissue? All right. I'll take it you're not too keen on the idea of having to have further operations. Oh, I'll be all right. I was trying to see it, it was 50-50. Parker here at St John's Medical Centre. Right, he said he did want to have counselling, and I genuinely believe he hasn't been taking crack since then. He still takes cannabis, but then a third of the people that live around this surgery take cannabis, so that's nothing new. OK, but it's really important you try and um, avoid the marijuana, the strong stuff or the weaker stuff. It's still best to try and avoid altogether. OK, take care. Cheers, bye-bye. If you want to try to avoid an operation, then the thing to do instead would be to have some physio and seeing if that helps. Yeah. Um, but um, 
unfortunately arthritis is, is tends to be progressive it tends to get worse with time anyway so I mean would you like to try some physio first or do you want to be referred for I don't mind be referred to see the doctor again you'll see the doctor yeah. about maybe having yeah. the operation yeah can then go back to work yeah or not at the moment, do you think you'd be able to manage the pain? No. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't be back this morning. I oh, know. Maybe if we give you a couple of weeks more yeah. off, and that gives enough time for hopefully the knee and the hip to, to settle down a bit more. They went straight away, they said. They won't get paid otherwise. I'll take that then, quick. <laughs> so that covers you from the 10th up yeah. until the 24th. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get the paperwork sent off. I'll ask them to see you as soon as possible. OK? Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Cheers. Bye, Ian. Cheers. What's just happened, then? Hi yeah. there. Yeah, what can um, I do for you today? Yeah, um, all the eggs, look. I'm um, a doing back tips, you know, but um, my levels have been quite high, and I think I might have a urine infection. All right. How high is high on your sugars right now? 22.3. OK. And where do you normally sort of run at? Well, normally they run at about um, five or, you know, six, I mean. Yeah, so they really, they really have shot up? Yeah. And you've had quite a few urine infections, is that right? Yeah, one and off, yeah. OK. Yeah. What, what are the symptoms you've been getting? Um, just like a burning sense, like, you know. It burns? Yeah. OK. And are you peeing more often than yeah, normal? Yeah, more often, yeah. Just continuously, all the time. Right. You know, yeah. OK. Have you seen any blood or anything no, in the No, no, it's not blood. Right. Blood. Any cough uh, or... No, no. Stif no. ..difficulty breathing, headaches? No. Rash? No, no. Nothing else like that? Diarrhea? No. no. Bowel habits, fine? No. Okay. Yeah, they've been a while. I think the first thing I'll do, if you don't mind, is just, just dip the urine. Yeah, so sure. Wait and take it from there, OK? Yeah. 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 There's a lot of glucose in your urine. Yes, sir. But there isn't much evidence that there's a nasty infection going on. You shouldn't really get a significant burning sensation from just sugar, but I think going to the pe toilet a lot, going to the toilet very often, is classic of, oh, sure. of um, your blood sugar not being very well controlled and being far, well much too high right now. I think we need to get your sugars better controlled, and I think that's going to mean cranking up the insulin slightly. I think we should go to 12 in the morning and 10 in the evening. And if I think we should see you early next week with the results of the urine sample to make sure we haven't missed any infection. Although no. it doesn't, I don't think that's what's happening. No. All right? OK. okay. okay. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Nice meeting you. So I just need to examine her. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Hello, Cheeky. Think of the three pigs. And the wolf outside going, huff, puff, blow your house down. That's the house. In. <laughs> Get out of it. Try again. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were going to score it, say, 10 being the worst pain in the world, like having your arm ripped off by a lion, and one being, like, bitten by an ant, how would you score it? 10. This pain in your stomach is as bad as having your arm being ripped off by a lion. Easy! <laughs> <laughs> That's it! Well done! Well done! Hello. Yeah, Joy. Jordan, this way. Jordan, no, this way. What's up with Jordan today? Right, um, I've just got a little problem. The way he's behaving. I'm just wondering, has he got some form of autism? Um, I was reading on the internet that kids that line their toys up, um, no, line that. line up their toys because he does it like all Lining the up time. The toys. Okay. Um, and he knows all the planets. You know, he just lined them up. Jordan, no, come this way. Jordan. Okay. Sit down. 
Okay. Voilà. And sometimes he's like this. He just laughs on conditionally. No, no. Jordan, can you stop? And how does he get on with the other kids his age? Um, fine. The teacher said he's fine. You know, um, Jordan, can you stop, please? If Jordan wants something, can he tell you about it? Can he tell you, I want yeah. this book, I want that book, yeah. I want to watch this, I want to do that, I need something to eat, I need something to drink? Yeah. I mean, you're right, autism is a spectrum. It goes from very severe to barely noticeable, to be honest. Yeah. Um, what you described about being quite obsessive about one thing, mm. yeah, about ritualistic behaviour of lining things up. Um, yeah, those are two features of autism. Yeah. But there's also features of normal five-year-old kids as well. Okay. 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 The internet has a, a really interesting role in, in healthcare. I think once people have their diagnosis, it's very easy for them to then go away and research what the treatment options are themselves. And that's great. I really welcome that. I want my patients to be really well informed about their conditions. But I think the one thing that the internet's not very good at is diagnosing. Usually if a patient has tried to diagnose themselves on the internet, I'd say nine times out of ten, they're probably wrong. Autism is a social communication disorder. It's your inability to be able to interact and socialise with the world around you. Yeah. It sounds like he does fine. Yeah. To, to line up the toys, that's yeah. every, every kid does that. Okay. Lots of adults do that. We all line things up just because that's the way we are. Okay. It doesn't make us autistic. It just means that that is a little idiosyncrasy of some people's yeah. behaviour. Yeah. He seems like a pretty normal five, five year old. To me. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. Jordan, come on, it's time to go. So thank you to Dr. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 It's time for the weekend. Right, I've put that in for you. You're welcome. OK, bye. Bye. This patient was so happy that she got an appointment at the time that she wanted. But she goes, oh, my God, thank you, darling. God bless you. <laughs> what are you doing this weekend? Watching my TV with my teddy bear. told me that half of the heart is not working. Yes. I stood up and all of a sudden I felt I was drowning. I'm had pain under my testicles. Under your testicles? Yes, just on the left side of the testicle. That's where I do have the pain. When was the last time that you had sex? So I'm one of them. Was it with a regular partner? Two people besides this girl, but they're all regular. Oh, God, getting pain, getting worse and worse and worse. I can't understand it no more. I can't even sleep. Good morning, St. John's can I help you. Could you come for this morning, 9.20? Your breathing seems a bit better. It is good. So I've had a few days where I've gone and not had any mm -hmm. cigarettes, but then there's been other times where the craving's just been like so much that I've had one, but after a couple of like just took a couple of pulls and thought it's disgusting and Right. Kind of just got it out of my system. Where are you getting the cigarettes from to have the odd one? Um, well, it just happens to be a drawer. <laughs> right. Which I'd like you to go home today and have a ceremonial oh. emptying into the bin. That's the fear bit, because I'm thinking, what if I really, really do need one? If you were addicted to heroin, yeah. would I say to you, 
go and just put five ounces of crack heroin or whatever in your drawer just in case you need it. Would I say that to you? No. So why would I say that to you with cigarettes? You wouldn't. No, you wouldn't, would I'm you? I'm it to myself. Again, it's another thing. You're setting yourself up to fail. OK. So get in there and All be right. positive. I will do. Promise you. Right. I'll go home and get rid of it. Get rid of it. What's the date of birth? 8.10.35. No, no, just 8.10.35. Can you bend forward and touch your toes for me? Great. Right. Ow! And up. Sharp pain. It's like every time I move, stabbing me. How s severe would you score it on a scale of one uh, to ten? ten? I would say nine and a half. How much movement have you got in this, in this arm at the moment? I have movements in it. Ouch. Hello, sir. Good. Good afternoon. Go on in. How's 2014 been treating you so far? In December, I spent 16 days in Lewisham Hospital. Very sorry. And now I'm on oxygen. You're on oxygen at home now, are you? 16 hours a day. So how are you finding that? Oh, well, there's been lots of funny things happen. Your nose runs. It, initially, it was bleeding. My throat's gone. Yeah. No, it was not very funny, really. No. Not at all. Not a nice thing to happen. What shocked me was they said I had pneumonia. Oh, well, yes. And uh, I'd come down with a coffee <laughs> and I had pneumonia and a heart attack. But it was the breathing bit that got me, because I don't know what it's like to drown, but by golly, that's, that was the impression I got on, on that Friday morning. Yes. I stood up and all really of a sudden I felt I was drowning because I was trying to grab air. Mm. And, and my hands were going, trying to, trying to... It's frightening. I think that my biggest frustration is um, feeling that I can't help my patient because where a problem is too complex. The, the key thing that we do is we listen and we try to understand what problems that the, the patient is coming to us with. Um, and we try to work with them to try and find the best solution. The guy told me that half of the heart is not working. Mm. And it's not being able to pump the blood round so it's, you know, the lungs are not functioning properly to do the job. Well, look, put the jacket on. Let's have a listen to your chest and see, see what's happened. <clears throat> see what's going on. Deep breath in and out for me, Brian. Good. Turn around for me, let's have a listen at the back as well. Okay, deep breath in out. Good, have a seat for me. Your chest sounds good, it sounds clear. You're getting lots of air in there, and so that sort of ties in. You can breathe, you're not feeling short of breath. That's all very positive. I imagine that the, the cause of a cough is the oxygen. It's drying things out and making you more likely to cough. I think the heart failure nurse is the right person to ask about getting re reassessed to see if it's really needed or not, because it sounds like it may not necessarily be needed. God, it's been a long six months, and I'm quite, quite honest with you, it did bring me down. Yeah. And no one seemed to care anymore. I still don't, but what the hell? Oh. Anyway, Doctor. All right, Brian. Nice to see you. Take care. If you're having problems, call me, yeah? You don't have to always come down. Just give us a call. You take care, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Make sure you're doing enough weight-bearing exercise, walking, yes. skipping, running, whatever you want to do that's <laughs> weight-bearing. Um, the symptoms are classic of asthma. Nocturnal wheeze, chest tightness. Well, it's positive. You're pregnant, my dear. We're talking about signs of serious infection. Drowsy, dopey, can't wake her, or the opposite. Hey, what's that? What can I do for you today? Um, for the past week or so, I've been getting really bad headaches. Mm -hmm. And um, then it kind of started to get worse Monday when I started to get mm -hmm. migraines. So when you say it started as a headache and then became migraine, what do you mean by migraine? Migraine as in severe 
pain either at the front or the side of my head mm -hmm. and I usually always end up throwing up. Is it a constant headache or is it coming and going? It's a constant one, it's been constant since, since Monday. At its worst, what sort of state does it reduce you to? Are you having to get into bed and...? Yeah, literally I will be in bed with the duvet over my head. Okay, and any other symptoms like cough, runny nose, diarrhoea? Uh, like diarrhoea, yeah. You had a bit of loose stool as well? Yeah. Okay. Um, one more question. Is there any chance you could be pregnant? Morning surgery, Stacey speaking. How can I help? to see a doctor tonight. Yeah, I will ask the doctor, but you are 35 Good. minutes late and you may have to rebook. When was the first day of your last period? Um, it was the middle of last month. Um, so that would make you a little bit late, maybe? Do you often miss periods? Um, yeah, because of my pill. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. And are you pretty good at taking it at the same time every day? Yeah. You don't forget? No. Just to be on the safe side, I think it's worth doing a pregnancy test. Do you think you could pee for me? Yeah. All right, if you take that to the loo and then just come on back straight to my room. Hello, good morning, surgery. Can I help you? Seems to be very busy at the moment. I can see that. I think what I'll do is send your urine off. There's just a little trace of white cell, which, you know, in the absence of any definitive diagnosis, and especially you're a bit tender over your bladder, we'll send that off to make sure there's no infection. Mm. But it's difficult to say whether the headache is causing the nausea or whether all the diarrhea and nausea is causing the headache. Yeah. What we can do is maybe give you some anti-sickness tablets, see if we can set things down, give you some painkillers, and then see how you get on. Pregnancy test is negative. Mm -hmm. Surprise. <laughs> Don't need a kid yet. Good morning, St John's Medical Centre. How can I help? No, as I've explained to you, and I'll explain it again, there is no appointments with Dr Vash till Wednesday. You're breaking up. I can't really hear you. I'm getting an odd word here and there. I can't hear you properly, sir. Do you know what? I can't hear you at all, I'm afraid. It's, it's a very bad line. You can have 3.40 or 4.20 this afternoon with Dr Nav. Would you like that appointment? I'm Dr Parker. What's the matter with you? I fell badly and I hit my knee, my leg and my ankle. And after, well, it was a bit painful, of course, for, for, the, for all this, the week. But then when I woke up a uh, Sunday morning, there was like a blood effusion inside the knee, so it was like all black. I couldn't be sure that if it was so because So you fell of the on the ground? Yes. And then there was some gentleman kicking me. And I, yeah, I can't be sure if that was because of the fall or the, the other person. Your head wasn't injured? I, uh, I had a slightly kick as well on my head. I you weren't knocked that. out? No, 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 mm -hmm. no. And a uh, ankle as well is still, like, still, still a bit black, but and I think it's still swollen. Shall we have a look at them? I think. Sure. Does your job involve walking or standing? Yeah, I'm a waiter. Oh, yes. Yeah. That is. Uh... I've been walking all week, and I've been walking. The walking is not really a problem. Standing. It is. Yes. Good. OK, let's way. pop you up on top here and have a look. One of the things that you ought to do straight away is put some ice on, because it, it stops the bruising, it stops the damage to the, to the knee. And Now, I'm going to ask you to take your trousers off. That's a pretty colour, isn't it? My goodness. I'm sorry if my hands are a bit cold. Fortunately, I think there's no fluid in, in, the, in the knee joint at the moment. If I move round here, is that hurt? And what about the back? Is that all right? No. Now, I'm going to take it like that and I'm going to twist it. OK, now, I'm going to just pull on your leg. And I'm just going to push. It's OK. Look, I think this is just bruising. That means soft tissue injury, no broken bones. Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason for sending you for an X-ray. So I think that's just going to get better on its own slowly.
Come in. Hi then. Oh, yeah. Mr. Lemon, good to see you. Sorry I kept you waiting such a long time. Is it possible to get a glass of water or a food and Yeah, sure, take a seat. Really Not a problem. You take a sit there. I'll be with you in just a second. Then. I've got a patient with me, but um, oh, right. you can bring him in. Okay, if you like. I'll move them into my room, and then I'll come into your room when you're finished. All okay. Right? <laughs> For really peculiar hormones, I don't know why. Is that, have you been feeling like this all day? Is that why you've come to see me, or has it just, just happened now? No, it just happened out there. I've just come over all I feel like lightheaded. Okay. Ever had an episode like that before? No. Ever fainted? When I cough too much, I faint. Okay. I pass out, which has happened, I don't know how many times, but. Any feeling of your heart's racing at all? No, I'm getting all hot and I feel a bit sweaty and cold and I don't know. Okay. It's very odd. Do you mind taking your jacket off in a minute so I can just check your blood pressure? Mm -hmm. What was it that actually brought you here to see me today? Um, I need uh, my doctor's certificates right now and I need uh, um, some of my tablets. Some more tablets. Oh, I'm sorry, I feel really straight. Just relax. Okay, just roll your sleeve off for me. Okay, do you mind just standing up for me? Mm -hmm. If you oh, stand like that, you do? Yeah. And is it a definite dizziness or is it the actual room spinning? <laughs> I feel like headed. I don't know. I don't know. I can't mm -hmm. really explain it. Sorry, let me just get I've been sleeping funny as well. I haven't been sleeping too well. Do you find yourself falling asleep? Like uh, at times when you wouldn't expect to fall asleep? Yeah. Do you mind just um, sitting on the edge of the bed for me? Yeah. Anything else changed in your life over the last couple of months? No. No? Got into any bad habits? Uh, drinking too much, or...? Uh, I do drink beer every day. How much alcohol do you drink? About five cans, five, six cans. Five, six cans. And what kind of uh, drink? Stella. Stella. Yeah. So that's, what is that, 5.4% or something? Five. Five percent? Yeah. OK. Would you consider that too much alcohol? Do you know that's yeah, bad for you? Yeah, it's too much alcohol. How long have you been drinking that much, do you think? Oof, I don't know. A long time. Six months, a year? More than that, probably about eight, nine years. Do you drink alone? Mm, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And do you live with anyone else? No, it's by myself. Okay. Do you mind just sitting down, lying down flat for me? Yeah, there's a little bit of pain there. There? Yeah? Mm, a little bit. I think, if I'm honest, I think there's a few factors. Did you have five lagers last night? Yeah. I think if you've been drinking five lagers, cans of lager every night for nine years, <laughs> you've done, you guarantee you've done damage to your liver. Yeah. Giving bad news to anyone um, isn't an enjoyable part of the job, but unfortunately it's something you have to do on a regular basis. And there's no beating around the bush, you have to be completely honest. It's definitely a regular part of the GP's job. If someone drinks that volume every day, you can't just suddenly stop because you can get into problems with withdrawal. But you certainly do need to cut down. And that might be changing the routine from five drinks a night to four drinks a night for a period of time, down to three drinks a night, and take it from there. I can't tell you that you want to stop, but if you feel like you're ready to stop or you want to think about cutting down, these are the people that are going to be able to help you. I mean, does that sort of scare you or does it stress you out? Or what are your thoughts on what we just spoke it, about? Yeah, it does kind of scare us, because I know I'm drinking too much, mm -hmm. but... I think it's just because I'm always in my, my room, my bedroom, I never go out, I never do anything. My legs always mm. get kind of giving away, or one day it's OK, the next day it's not. I think it's just that, because I've been like stuck in the house for like nearly two, three years now, you know, not being able to do anything. So I go out now and then, but not as much as yeah. a normal person would have for my age. I'm sorry you had a tough time lately, but I'm glad we've kind of stumbled upon it almost by chance because it means that we can got the opportunity now to try and improve your situation a little bit, not just with your health, but also with, you know, how you're feeling yourself and yeah. your outlook in life in general, really. Ooh. Our priority now is to get the blood test done, sort out, see what, see where we are with, with the liver situation. But next time I see you, hopefully 
you'll be able to tell me that you've cut down a little bit, mm -hmm. and then we can take it from there. Any alcohol? Uh, yes. On average, what would you drink in one week? Um, probably five or six pints of beer, I'd say. Would you have eight or more drinks in one sitting? Eight? Yes. No. When you're drinking every day, the risk can be high, and the liver doesn't tell you it's not well until it's really, really not well. Good morning. How are you? What's different to this one and this one? Uh, the Meprazol 20 milligrams, and on the back of this, it says that this is a Meprazol 20 milligrams. So we're exactly the same, but just made by different companies. But well, different colour, that all. Yeah, but we're just, it's because they're made by different companies. Yeah. It's like Coca Cola and Dr. Pepper. Exactly the same. Pretty much. Exactly the same. Those of them, I can't help it no more, mate. I, I tell you. Getting pain, getting work and work and work, mate. I can't understand it no more. I can't even sleep. The likelihood is you have these things called adhesions in your tummy. Remember I said that? Yeah. So that's where things stick together and then you might get some pain from time to time. But it's very difficult to treat that sometimes. The MRI scan's an important part of it and that will show up if there's anything going on. I'm telling you, it's very, very painful. It's not only one here, it's here to here, mm. right? Oh, God, I can't even understand the doctor. I tell you, I, I bite my tongue up, I will. But now this one not go away. Not go away at all, doctor. So the pain's a bit worse than it was. It's before. getting worse and worse yeah. and worse. Well, that, that's why it's important that you've had the MRI scan and now things will get followed up. In some ways, it's a bit of a pity you missed that gastroenterology appointment that I organised late last oh, year. I know. I will, can't help it no Once more. Once I have the re report, then I can decide where to refer you to. Yeah. OK. All right. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye, All right, thank you very much. Take care. Bye -bye. What might be a good idea is just to announce, you know, that they're running late, so we're not just sitting there waiting. How are your water works? Are you peeing normally? A bit more than normal. Are you going to the toilet more frequently at all? I do. I suffer from dribbling. Mm, yeah. Does he have any problems with going to the toilet when he goes for a wee? No. No. No, no problems there. I'm Dr Trin. What can I do for you today? I'll have pain under my testicles. Under your testicles? Yes, just on the left side of the testicle. That's where I do have the pain. Is it there all the time or does it come and go? It comes and go. And when it comes on, does it feel like aching or does it feel like stabbing or a shock pain? Aching. Aching, yeah. OK. Is there any problem when you pass urine? No. No, no burning, stinging, no blood? No, no, no. Do you ever get any discharge from the penis? Anything leaking from the penis? No. Any no. creamy, anything coming out? When I'm not, uh, when I'm not peeing. OK. No. All right. I'm going to have to examine you down below. Would you like me to call the chaperone? Yeah. You, you want someone else in the room? Somebody else in the room. Because I'm a female doctor. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're OK, not. I will ask somebody to come in. Good afternoon, St John's Medical Centre. Sarah speaking. How can I help? The thing is, the baby clinic finishes at quarter to three. Hello. How much do you weigh? Um, I've got a patient on the line. Her baby um, is a year old and he's come up with a rash. She's quite concerned about it. Can you point to where the pain is? This, this, this. OK, so it's the test yeah, it is the, the testicle. testicle. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to examine here. Any pain where I'm feeling? No, no, no. OK, all right. That's fine. Let's get you dressed again. Um, there are lots of causes of that kind of aching pain. Mm -hmm. One of them is an enlargement of blood vessels by the testicle. So I think I will request an ultrasound. What we should do is just maybe do a few more tests. Um, I'd like you to do a urine sample for um, sexually transmitted infections, just to rule that out. Is there anything you want to ask me? I was asked to do some tests. OK, so they were just some routine blood tests. Yeah. yeah. Fine, so let's have a look at the results. The cholesterol is OK, liver function is OK, kidney function is fine, and we did an HIV test, which was negative. The test, however, uh, it doesn't detect if you've 
picked up HIV within the last three months because it takes that time window for the results to show sure, in the blood. Okay, okay. So, um, when's the last time you had sexual intercourse? Um, say a year plus. Okay, all right. That tells me that as of three no. months ago, <laughs> There was nothing positive. Not enough, so yeah. if you've abstained from sexual intercourse yeah, for that time, I, I yeah. um, there's no reason we need to worry. Okay. okay, so once you've had the ultrasound, give it about a week for the result to come back to us yeah. and then book an appointment to come back and discuss the findings. Okay, thank you very okay, much. Okay, my oh, pleasure. Yes. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Hello, Doreen, come in. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Good. What can I do for you? I seem to have been bitten by an insect. <laughs> oh! Where? On the leg, I'm afraid. <gasps> Doreen, you poor thing! Put your foot yeah. up. You need the antibiotics. Antibiotics? Absolutely, it's okay. spreading. Look, all that redness. The actual strong red bit's about three and a half centimetres by one and a half. When did you...? Yesterday. Oh, and that's come from yesterday? Yes. Did you feel the little biter? No, I didn't feel anything. You never see them, usually, <laughs> do you? Well, it's pretty powerful, isn't it? It is. Now, because that's a difficult part of the body to heal, it means you've got to be jolly careful with it. Try not to bump it, uh, put it up the foot and watch it. Sometimes it's worth even drawing a barrow mark where the line is you know, like along here, because that should start to get smaller right. over the next two days. If it's not, you've got to ask to be seen by the emergency doctor, because that's serious. You know, if it's getting very much worse, you're going to need intravenous antibiotics. Oh. But hopefully none of this is going to happen. OK. <laughs> Great. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Now, all you'll hear is different sounds. The slightest sound, Joyce, from this ear. Right. You say, yes. Here we go, Joyce. OK, and I'd just like to follow my finger, keep your head still. I'm just going to try and lighten your eyes, that's OK? Up and down. Yes. Yes. Well done. What's the problem? Do you know what the problem is? Yes, yeah, in my throat. It's got a sore throat right. and a bad cough. How long's it been there for? Do you know I think at least a week, isn't About it? A week, yeah. yeah. Yes, a week. Let's have a look in your throat then. Give me a nice big ah, like this. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's, that's really good. Let's have a look here. Say ah for me. Ah. Beautiful, good. Everything looks really good back there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's have a feel around your neck here. Good. Do you want to just pop your jacket off and let me have a listen to your chest? Right, <coughs> let's have a listen to your oh, chest. Yeah. OK, deep breaths in and out for me. Excellent. Stay there one second. Hang on. Right, all right. Do you mind if I check your blood pressure whilst you're retaining? No, that one got quick enough. That's got the fist left, all right. Hey, hey. Thanks for reminding I'm me. Like, I'm going to wipe my coat. <laughs> I'm glad somebody <clears throat> knows what we're doing today. Right, there you go. You can watch the numbers go up. Your blood pressure is 123 over 76, which is yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay. That's perfect. You're very happy with that. Yeah. So that's very good. Yay. In terms of your sore throat and cough, yeah. I'm not worried at all. I no. think it's just a straightforward cold, a bit of a virus, which you're going to get better from all by yourself. Now, as part of our normal tests in looking after your kidneys... Um, my kidneys, my mum's kidneys. Your, yeah, your ones. Your kidneys. Yeah. And my mum. And your mum's. Yeah. I was wondering if we could get a sample of your urine. Okay. Which just means you, you need to do a sample in there and hand it into yep. the reception on your way out. Are you okay? Yeah, was there anything else I could help you with today? No, I think that's it, thanks. All okay. right? Yeah, my call. Right, okay. Thank you, Tony. All the best, lovely to see you again. Yes. It's okay, Michael. Bye bye. Oh, bye, Tony. Oh, 
Sorry to keep you waiting such a long time. Please come and take a seat. So it's been a, I think I last saw you in December. Yeah. When you just um, got out of jail. Yeah. And um, how have things been going for you over the last few months? Oh, last month I've been more down and up, getting low again, getting very depressed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. All right, sorry to hear that. We get to a point you don't want to do nothing, like, you know what I mean? If I'm talking to someone, the first thing that would come into my head is how can I get out of the conversation without talking to them? And mm -hmm. sometimes when I talk, I'll have panic attacks and that, like, you know, it's, I just burst out sweating and things, like. Well, last time I spoke to you, we spoke quite a bit about your mood, mm. and you were quite optimistic that things were going to be all right, mm. um, having got out of jail. Um, have you been slipping into any of the other sort of bad habits? No, no, no. I haven't been using drugs and it's just no. stable on my methadone and that, but... Because I've used drugs a lot in the past, so, you know, when I speak to doctors, I think they think I'm lying sometimes. Does that make any sense to you? Lying about what? About the way I feel and that. I don't know, it's just, just the way I am. Do you mean specifically about people might think you're not depressed? Yeah, that's, that's what I mean more than anything, yeah. But that... It's not our job to cast judgment or really make you yeah. know, those kind of assertions. I have no, to take no, what, what, what all my patients, yeah. regardless of their background, yeah. what they tell me, I take at face value. No, I understand that. You do have a mental health problem. Yeah. Lifestyle change is not easy for a patient to do. And nowadays, a lot of people just want a tablet, they want medication, they want sort of recovery to be something passive. but. Unfortunately, it's just not an option. So I think it's really important to give patients time, find out you know, what they understand about the situation and, and make sure there's some kind of plan for them to come back and uh, talk to you about it. When I last spoke to you, you didn't think that you would ever do anything. I mean, we spoke about suicide mm. and quite yeah. some dark things as well. Yeah. Are those thoughts that it's still not the sort of thing you'd act on or...? No, I'm not brave enough to do it, <laughs> if that makes any sense to you. Are there any other protective factors that you think, things, other things that stop you? Does your, do your mum or your son yeah, come family, into your thoughts as well? Fam only family, really, now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm glad you don't have the courage to do anything. Yeah. But if, you, if that ever changes, yeah. if you suddenly start thinking you're, you're so low that you think you are mm -hmm. going to act on those thoughts, yeah. it's vital you come and talk to us. Uh-huh. OK? And if, yeah. it's not, if you can't get in touch with us, you yeah. need to pick up the phone and talk to Mind, yeah. they've got a good helpline, mm. or Samaritans yeah. have got a helpline. If that's not working, you have to go to A&E because yeah. they've got trained psych, psych liaison mm -hmm. nurses who are there for that sort of sort of discussion. I know that, yeah, okay. yeah. And um, I started you on some tablets as well. Do you take them every day? I do, yeah. Okay. But I haven't taken them for the last four or five days because I ran out. It is really important with these kinds of medication that you build up slowly and you don't suddenly stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, a big part of it is being a bit organised about your medication. Because sometimes when you're feeling low, you, you lose mm -hmm. you lose the motivation to stay organised. But actually, yeah. when you're feeling low, you need to be more on it. Yeah. When's my, when do I run out of tablets? Yeah. When, should I, when do I see the GP next? Yeah. So I'll give you some more of your medication. To be honest with you, you've only been out of jail for a couple of months. And from my point of view, whenever I see you, I think you're doing pretty well for yourself. And staying out of the drugs and the alcohol, which got you in that situation in the first place, mm -hmm. is the main priority. All right, thank All right. you very much, Doctor. Take care. OK, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Morning. Hello. How are you doing? OK, thank you. How are you? Not bad. Why am I poking your belly? <gasps> oh. Oh. Ah. Well done. Oh, well done. Right, make sure I've got the right person. Give me a name. Leslie, Jane, yeah, Bernard. Yes. Left arm or right arm? Which, now, you're the one that keeps telling me you've got fabulous veins, right? So let's have a look at this one. Yeah, no, this, I've done this one yet. Yeah, it's not mostly that one. Well, let's see, because this is nearest. <sighs> OK, here we go. Hmm. Anyway, have you starved yourself? I'm not eaten. I had uh, about 12 o'clock yesterday afternoon. That's all right. But not this morning, because these no. are fasting bloods, all right? Let me try that one. How's your mum? She's fine. Do you live with your mum? Yeah. Yeah, I thought you did. So you've got a lovely veins. <sighs> right, put your hand on there. <sighs> I'm a brave boy. You are. Lollipop. You deserve a lollipop for that. Now, listen, mm -hmm. these go off today. Yes. And the results will be back for Tuesday. OK. Right. 
Let's just put a bit of tape on you. Go and eat something decent for breakfast. There you go. There you go, you're done. All right? Oh, look at that. Good old arm. OK, right. take Thank care. You Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. Nice right. weekend. And you too. <laughs> So the swelling itself only started yesterday. And have you had lots of discharge? Um, yeah, kind of. I've been bathing with salt water every few hours. OK, so if you want to go ahead and use that to... Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Mm. And is it painful? Yeah, the upper eyelid is very painful. OK. I'm just going to hold your eyelid up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's painful. That's painful. That in, yeah. Now, does it hurt when you move your eye about? I can't see I very know, well. So I'll try again. Can you see my finger? I can. Keep your head still and just follow with your eyes. I don't think I can do that. That's painful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, OK, you've had no insect bites or anything up there, but you have been unwell with sort of cough and cold symptoms. Mm. OK. The sinuses, there's one here called the ethmoid sinus, which is very close to the eye. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's possible for infection to spread through. Did. My worry would be, because I can't get the eye open very well mm. and because I can't assess the eye movements, if there is any infection around the eye, if that tracks into the muscles that are close to the eye, we could be in trouble. I think we're going to have to get you over to St Thomas's. When? Today. You're joking. No. Oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Why can't you? <laughs> You're already <laughs> off. Uh, there is uh, more fields. No. 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 That's, That's a bit a of a way game, away. No, no. <laughs> this is not a negotiation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, my gosh. Present this to reception when you get there. So... Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. Hopefully it will be just very straightforward and they can send you on your way mm -hmm. and everyone will live happily ever after. <laughs> Thank Excellent. you. Thanks a lot. All right, have a good bum back. Me too. Nice oh, thank you. Bum back. Bum back. Bye bye. <laughs> I haven't got any appointments that have been cancelled today. You'd have to give us a ring at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning for the same day appointment. No, I need to phone in at 8 on the date you want the appointment. OK, then. Thanks, bye. Hello. Come and have a seat. Thank you. Natalie. Yeah. How are you? Um, well, I've come back, so I'm still getting this real tightness in my chest. At night, I feel like somebody's wrapped a belt around my chest and is pulling it really tightly. On the front bit of your chest? Yeah, sort of right here. On that left? Yeah. Okay. I will find that I sort of have to sort of stop to sort of take a breath Is it in. that you feel you can't get enough air in? Yeah, that's how it sort of feels. Um, and, but then when I lie down at night, I get this sort of quite severe sort of chest pain. When you lie down? Yeah, it's when I'm lying down. We doctors always think of the worst things first. Yeah. Your pain doesn't sound to me like anything to do with the heart. So we then think about what might be going on in the lungs. Mm-hmm. And you've got a normal chest X-ray. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm thinking, is there something else going on in the lungs? Yeah. And um, you would have to speak to the duty doctor regarding that because it's a medical question. You need to run tests on him because his immune system is amazing. He had exactly what we all had on his belly. Sorry to <laughs> burst your bubble, mate. But it's not your amazing immune system. on any of these bones? Do any of these hurt? Going down here. Am I producing the pain you get in that side of the chest? Yes. Yeah, you are. I can feel it sort of... Coming across there? Yeah. But I'm not actually hurting, so no. coming down... Mm. Yeah. That's sorry. It's right there. And that is the pain you're mm -hmm. getting going right across the chest? Yeah. OK. Let's turn around and listen around the back. Take a really big breath in. And out. Does that hurt? Yeah. Sorry. And where it hurts is there. Yeah, it hurts like here, here. coming round underneath my breast. 
OK, let's come and sit down. And you've had this a long time. Quite a while now. Wow. I think some of the problem is a condition which I'm going to give a funny name to, called Titsy's disease. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a joint between the end of the ribs and the breastbone. Uh -huh. And for some reason, there is something becomes inflamed, right. that particular joint. OK. And Titsy's just the name of the guy who discovered it. OK. okay. Is there anything I can do, perhaps? Well, they do say take anti-inflammatory pain relievers. Right. Um, sometimes physiotherapy can help a bit. So okay. I don't think it's the end of the world. I'm sure we can probably help. Thank you so much for being so thorough. That stretches my diagnostic skills, but I think I've got the right diagnosis. <laughs> I wanted to do the poo sample and check there wasn't a bacteria in your stomach. Everything feels normal when you're wiping your bum and... Mm. Yeah, OK. You don't pass jet black sticky poo? Yeah, maybe. He's done a poo, hasn't he? Yes. How can I help you today? Um, my mum just found out recently she's got cancer now. Mm. So um, I just want to get myself checked out, basically, to just make sure that everything's OK, really. Mm. Yeah. Tell me what happened what, with your mum, what, what she's been diagnosed with. She went for a check-up and she had colon checked and stuff, and they, mm -hmm. and they said that she had cancer um, spreading from her kidney to her lung. Quite tough, then. Mm -hmm. I just want to get myself sorted, just checked, just to see if I'm OK, really. Are you worried that you might have cancer then, or...? Yeah, because uh, her mother died from, from cancer as well, so... Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it might be hereditary, so... How have you been in yourself? I've had slight murmurs. Like, we are. Mm. It feels like it's, like it's Mr B or something. It's like, mm -hmm. a, like I've been running, but I haven't. Do you get other symptoms? I've been passing you in quite frequently as well. Because of those symptoms, with your with peeing more frequently, I just need to ask you a few more sensitive questions. OK. OK, when was the last time that you had sex? <sighs> I'd say about I'd say a month ago, three to four weeks. Was it with a regular partner? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Have you had sex with anyone else? Two people besides this girl, but they're all regular. So you haven't said it with I, three I, different... I, yeah, girls. yeah, basically. Do you get any discharge from your penis at all? No. Mm. No, I don't think I've contracted anything there. What we can do is uh, listen to your heart and lungs and take a look at your stomach. So sit up for me, sit up. Deep breath in that. And out. OK, and then. OK, your chest and heart sound fine. I'll get you just to lie back for me and I'll take a look at your stomach. So just gently press. Yeah. So it's not painful at all. Nah. OK, your stomach feels OK. And what I'd say is examining you, to me, everything is normal yeah. to examine. Okay. So that's reassuring. Yeah. I mean, you're telling me that you're sleeping with three different girls at the moment. Mm -hmm. That puts you at higher risk of having sexually transmitted diseases. Yeah, yeah, so sure. you need to make sure you haven't practising safe sex mm. with oh, yeah, using cool. condom. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. But yeah. you are at higher risk of the fact you're having three yeah. different partners. Yeah, because... Yeah, so I could get you to do a urine sample to test for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Have you got details for the sexual health clinic as well? No, I haven't. I haven't. So if you've got a number, that I'll be very Yeah, I can give you details if you want to have a full check. Yeah, thanks very much for that. All right, no problem. Come in. Hello. Come in. How are you today? Fine. Um, I think Bailey might have chicken pox. He's come up in the little spots, so oh, I just wanted to really? check to make sure. Has he been in contact with anybody with chicken um, His little cousin has it. So spot. when was he contact, in contact with it? A week, um, ten days ago? Um, very recent. Yeah. Very recent. Should we have a look? Oh, yes. We've got some spots on his back coming out. Here, here, yeah. here, here. Can you see? They're coming out in little bumps, bumps in blisters yeah, first. Then they usually become a sort of yellowy pussy for a little oh, one, okay. and then they come scabby. So have you got any on your head? 
have a look. A little bump there, I can see. Possibly, and a possibly little yeah. bump there, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Shall we have a look in your mouth now? He hasn't actually got anything in his mouth yet. Okay. He's got a wee bit of a oh, temperature. Oh, okay. Thirty-seven seven. Right, the normal is 37.5 and oh, below, okay. so it's just a fraction above normal. I think it probably is going to be chicken pox, to be honest. Okay. He's actually infectious six days from when the rash comes out. Okay. Now, the spots won't have gone by the end of that six days, but they will be scabbed over and his temperature will be down. But, oh, wow. you know, he needs to be off school, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's fine. Is that all right? That's fine. It's a good thing to get it over with, you know. <laughs> well, there we are. Champion. Thank you for your help. Good. Bye. 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 God bless you, Doctor. Take care. Thank, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. What a good doctor you are. Take care. Love you too. Thank you very bye. much. Bye bye. Go away. <laughs> Behave yourself. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks for your help. No problem. All the best. Take care. All right. Take care. God bless you. Take care yeah. too. Yeah, See you back. again. Bye bye. bye.